Hello everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be making this really awesome table runner. And the really cool thing is you can make the center portion of this table runner with a single charm pack. So let's get started. We're gonna to start today's project by separating the fabrics in our charm pack. So I like to just put the lights together and the darks together. We're gonna to pair them up, pretty sides facing each other. And we're going to mark a line from corner to corner. So this is one way that you can start to sew your half square triangles. You will sew a quarter inch on both sides of that center line. Or you can pair pretty sides together of two charms. And if you have the OmniGrid quarter inch ruler, you can center that middle line in your ruler to the corners and draw two lines, and that will actually be your sewing line. So there's two different ways you could go about doing this part of the project. Either way works perfectly fine. You will line up the raw edges of your two charms and go ahead and throw a couple pins in there to keep those together. And we're going to bring this over to the sewing machine. You're going to go through and pair up all of the charms. And at the sewing machine, we will do this one first. This is the one I used, the OmniGrid quarter inch ruler. And I'm sewing directly on both of the lines. This is the one we drew the center line from corner to corner. And I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm sewing on both sides, lining up that center line to the edge of my presser foot. So both ways work exactly the same. Once you've sewn all of your charms with both seams, we're gonna cut these apart. Once you've cut apart all of your units, you can bring them over to the pressing board. I really feel like you have two pressing options, right? You can press your seams over to the dark side, which moves along pretty quickly through all of your blocks, or you can press your seams open. So I like to set my seams and then open them up and give them a press. And while this might be a little bit more time consuming, I do feel like you get a little bit of a flatter block in the end. Now that you have all of your charms sewn together into half square triangles, we're gonna go back and using our ruler, we're gonna draw the line from corner to corner in the opposite direction. You're gonna do that for all of your pairs. You're gonna match them up so that the seams are nested together. And you can pin them once again. You can also double check to make sure that you're nice and lined up by flipping that top one over before pinning it. Your two sewn seams should be going in the same direction and our new sewing lines are going in the opposite direction. Go through and pin all of your pairs back together just like this and we're going back to the sewing machine. At this point, I like to just do chain piecing. So I'll go through the whole stack just like this. So that first seam and then flip them back around and come back the other side. This does help speed up the process just a little bit. Then we can take those pins out. And again, we're cutting right down the center, separating these units. And now we have a quarter square block. See that? Now I wanted to show you, these are the quarter, uh, quarter squares that I pressed the seams over to one side. And I wanted to show you if you press your seams to the dark side, if you come in and take a seam ripper and remove these couple of stitches at this point, I like to unpick them from both sides. Your block, if you press this second seam open, will lay a little bit flatter. 
Now, this is a little bit time consuming, but if you save time pressing your seams to the dark side, then you could spend a little bit of time unpicking that seam. And once you do that, you can uh, just open up that seam right there and give that a press. So once you've separated all of your quarter square blocks, you're gonna come over to the iron and give them a press. These are the two blocks that I did with the seams open all the way on all of the seams. And this is the block where I first pressed the seam to the dark side. And I'm just gonna open up the seam on this one. And on this one, I'm gonna press the seam over to one side. And uh, you can try it and see what you think. When you press those seams over to one side, you do have a little bit of thickness where all of those fabrics come in right to the middle right there. And the one where I've opened up the seam is a little bit flatter. So I think it's totally up to you and a personal choice. Press all of your quarter square blocks. And at this point, we're gonna square them up. So I have my OmniGrid ruler. Any of your square rulers will work as long as they're bigger than three and a half by three and a half. That's the size we're gonna trim these down. I want you to find the one and three quarters mark on your ruler. I like to just bring in a marker and mark that. And what that is, is the center part, the center mark of three and a half by three and a half inches. And if you line that little mark at one and three quarters by one and three quarters up to the very center of your quarter square block, that's gonna help you get a nice centered quarter square block. We're gonna trim these down to three and a half inches by three and a half inches. This might be the most time consuming part of making this table runner, <laughs> especially if you're slow at squaring up blocks like I am. Go through all of your units and square them up. These are the actual fabrics I am working with today and you can see I just sat down with a movie and uh, had a movie on in the background while I worked squaring up my units. And I made two charm packs worth of quarter square <laughs> blocks. And so I actually have enough to lay out two of these table runners. Once you've squared up all of your units, you're gonna go ahead and just lay them out. I like to mix up all of mine so that I get a good di distribution of the color all the way through the center piece of this table runner. You're gonna make three rows and there's 19 units in each row. Once you get them all laid out, you can bring your piles over to the sewing machine and you're gonna piece these together with a quarter inch seam allowance. So I just have my three stacks right next to my sewing machine and I'm just doing some chain piecing. This also helps speed along making this table runner. You'll keep going until you add all 19 pieces to the three individual rows. You can see I'm not pressing in between, I'm just adding my pieces. And when I'm done, I will have three complete rows when I go over to the pressing board. Now at this point in the construction of making this table runner, I do like to press my seams to the side because the next thing we're gonna do is actually join these three rows together. And I like to nest my seams. It just helps me line up the pieces so that my points meet in between each of these rows and these blocks. And I find it a lot easier if my seams are pressed to the side. 
And I like to alternate, like one row, I'll press my seams to the left. The next row, I press my seams to the right. And then the next row, I press them back to the left. And this helps them lock in place over at the sewing machine. You could also glue baste or pin baste these rows together if that's easier for you. I don't know about you, but I kind of think those open seams on the back are kind of pretty. All right, here's a really good example. See how the seams, one is going one way and one is going the other. And when you rub them together, they just sort of lock right there in that seam. So I'm gonna start joining the first two rows together. And you'll see as I'm going along, I just lock those sections together as I work my way right down that seam. Now, though, I've sped up part of this video uh, a little bit just to make today's video a little bit quicker. I'm actually just taking my time and enjoying some sewing time at the machine and uh, see how nesting those blocks really help those points come together where those blocks meet. So there's the first two rows. I'm going to bring in the third. Again, my seams are going to nest. And I haven't pressed the seam that I just sewn with you. I'm just staying right here at the sewn machine. And I'll press these two longer seams once I get this third row added on. Now that we have this third row attached to the middle section of our table runner, now I'm going to bring this over to the pressing board and I'm going to lay this down and figure out how I want to press these, these last two seams. You could certainly open them up. I think that would give you a, a flatter center portion of your table runner, but for me that just takes way too long. <laughs> Let me just be really honest with you. So I'm going to press my seams over to one side and it actually works out easier if I'm pressing from the front and I'm just laying that seam towards the outer uh, row. I'm just using my hands to work that row over, work that seam underneath. And I'm pressing this middle section a little bit at a time and I'm being really careful because with all of these little triangles in this center section, it could go wonky pretty easy. So I'm just being very mindful not to stretch anything out of place. I like to keep it nice and straight if possible. And then I like to come back with a little bit of steam. I do put water in my iron and uh, really press those seams nice and flat. And once you're pressed, we're ready to start with our first inner border. So this is the smallest border. I like to add my borders to the longest side first and then the two shorter sides. And that's just me. <laughs> that's what I like to do. We're adding this border with a quarter inch seam allowance. I like to cut my borders a little bit longer than what I need them to be. And then I usually press them and then I'll square them up. You'll see that here in just a second. So I cut it a little bit longer. I went and pressed that border and see how I squared it up nice and flush with the next shorter side. Now I'll come in and add the two short sides. 
I like those to be a tad bit longer than what I need them to be because I'll press those and square that up before adding the next border. So once I've pressed the first border and squared it all up nice and pretty, this is what we look like. This table runner actually gets three borders. So this is the second one. Again, I add to the longer sides and then the short sides, squaring it up as I go along. And then the third border. And I think that is fabulous. I love that so much. That darker border really frames that table runner really nicely. So what I'm gonna do is let's talk about some of the ways to quilt this table runner. I think on your sewing machine, you have lots of different options, right? You could do a stitch in the ditch along your rows in between all of your blocks. And I think that would be stunning and fairly simple to do, right? I think also you could stitch in the ditch between your triangles. I think that would be gorgeous. And that also would be fairly easy to do. Now, if you wanted to get creative and put the free motion foot on your machine, what about doing like a cathedral window type of quilting where you're actually quilting in those triangles? I think that would be pretty spectacular as well. So that's a couple different options for quilting on your domestic machine. I think you could also do like an all over meandering on your sewing machine or an all over uh, like a loop-de-loop -loop quilting would be pretty. Today, I've actually loaded my table runner on the long arm. And I thought it'd be fun just to bring you along and stitch a couple rows with you. Hopefully this doesn't make you too seasick with the motion. I'm still trying to find out, find a really good place to put a camera so that I can show more of the quilting on the long arm. You can fast forward if this part is making you a little seasick. <laughs> We're gonna quilt a couple rows in this position so that you can just see it stitch out. So today I've picked a design called Bubble Wrap and I purchased it uh, from Urban Elements. I'm gonna tell you, I was really excited. I've had this design uh, for a couple of days waiting to get to this point. And uh, oh, it's so pretty. Wait till you see it at the end. So I'll just fast forward it as we move back and then I'll turn it back to the regular speed. <laughs> I do have lots of background noise today. I have the windows open because it's so nice outside, but there goes a the school bus. <laughs> so the second row of this bubble wrap design comes back in the opposite direction. I almost, almost wish I had gone a little bit smaller with my design so that the actually the, the little wavy lines going back and forth would have been a little bit more compacted and smaller but this is okay this is the first time i've stitched this design so i'm quite pleased with it so it just alternates rows back and forth We'll stitch one more row with you can, so that you can really see uh, how it alternates and it really starts forming this bubble wrap effect. When you're doing an all over design like this, especially one that's much looser like this. This is not a lot of quilting being thrown down on this table runner. When you're doing an all over design like this, I really don't know how important it is to have uh, the flatter blocks where all of those triangles meet in the middle. You can see that every once in a while, my hopping foot will go close to those intersections 
but I don't know throughout this whole table runner if it actually quilted through those intersections. So let's change the view just a little bit so you can get a different viewpoint of what it looks like as the long arm is going across this table runner. This is a, a really quick design. I would say it took me maybe half an hour start to finish to quilt this table runner. And that was putting it on the frame and taking it off the frame. You can kind of see from this viewpoint a little bit of the texture that that bubble wrap design is creating on this quilt. So let's just take a peek before I advance this quilt up a little bit and finish quilting off the camera. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm kind of really wanting to try this quilting design on a t-shirt quilt. I think that would be amazing. Even though the design is a little bit bigger than what I had pictured, I still really love it. So I'm gonna finish quilting that off camera and we'll skip forward to where I'm all done. And I'm gonna square up this table runner. I like using the largest square ruler I have to square up my quilts and my projects. And I like to start at the four corners first, and get those corners nice and square. And then I will clean up the edges. Just removing that extra batting and backing fabric. I'm gonna tell you, this is when I start getting really excited <laughs> that I'm getting close to being done. And once you remove all that extra, it just really starts taking shape and you get a great idea of what your quilt is gonna look like all finished up. Look at the back, look at that quilting. I love it. I love it so much. And here is the front. And at this point, y'all, all that's left is a binding. Now we're not gonna bind this table runner together. Uh, I've done binding in several videos and I know there's lots of creators out there with some really great binding tutorials. But here we are. There's the binding. Here it is on my table. I think it is so pretty. Imagine using different fabrics, right? You could do one with Christmas fabrics, fall fabrics, spring fabrics. I think the possibilities are endless. The different looks would be endless. But I'm gonna tell you, I think this table runner year round with the colors I've used could stay on my table <laughs> too. All right, y'all. Thank y'all so, so much for watching and I'll see y'all really soon. Bye everybody.